Martin and welcome to another edition of Summary for Beginners and today we're going to do a reviewing guide on the latest product that I've just purchased which is the Geo-Optic Artificial Star. Now the reasons why uh, I got this product is that for many years a lot of astronomers uh, usually use a star test to test out the telescope collimation and basically what they do by this star test is they will quickly um, point the telescope to a bright star and they put the telescope out of focus and by doing that is putting out of focus is to see if the the circles or the ringlets on the out of focus image are sort of parallel and it's an, an old method uh, a technique that, that they use to check if the collimation is near perfect or almost near perfect. However, um, this process is a long sort of process because if uh, what usually happens if if it is out of collimation, what they then do is they will start to adjust the optics on the mirrors or the lenses and try and adjust it what, during the night and. What that does is it will basically you lose precious time and a lot of effort and it is hard work trying to collimate a scope in the night trying to adjust the optics. This is the reason why I got the artificial star. Is it is a mechanical device, it emits a, a small fibre optic uh, laser beam which is safe to look at and it will imitate a, an imaginary star and you can use this during the day and this device can will check your optics to a certain amount of distance so this, this device will only work to a certain amount of apertures which will tell you in the, their manual on the certain eye size apertures and with these apertures you need a certain a set distance so that for the, the device to work. Um, you can usually get them from a lot of good astronomy shops, um, particularly telescope service uh, offer some of these devices. Uh, there is usually two brands, there is the Geo-Optic or there is the Pico Star. There isn't, isn't many of these artificial star devices around. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a closer look on the, the latest product that I've got. Here's the box for the Geo Optic uh, Fiber Optic Star with brightness control. As you can see, the, the part number for this item is uh, 30 Alpha 028. All right, uh, comes a very good, uh, well suitable box which we're going to take off. very sealed in ok we're taking off the uh, plastic cup, uh, film the wrapping get, get rid of the plastic wrapping ok wrap, plastic wrapping off we're then going to open up the top lid Okay, as we can see, we've got loads of bubble wrap. Taking all the bubble wrap off. So as you can see, it's well packed, which tells me it is a very good, uh, qual high quality product. There is a unit again, wrapped again in another clear wrapping, and this will be the instruction manual. This is the artificial star instruction manual. And there's the part numbers for which um, up star you've got. I believe I've got the up to star 30 alpha 028, which is the one that has the variable brightness. Um, as you can see, there are actually uh, three variants of this. You've got just the normal, simple uh, device, um, which is just a simple uh, artificial star one with no brightness. 
Then the second model up is um, one with the variable brightness. And then you've got a third one which has the red, uh, green and blue uh, spectrum channels with, uh, with brightness control. Uh, but this is mainly used for refractors because apparently you can colour me uh, certain high performance refractors. But we're not going to go into those other models but basically we are going to focus on um, just the Yachty Star itself. So as you can see it's well wrapped, well protected so it tells me it's a very good high quality product. Um, and we're going to have a closer look, uh, we're going to take off the, the wrapping first, we're going to take that off. Okay, this is the Gero Optic Artificial Star. Uh, it it is the uh, the al uh, the thirty zero alpha zero two eight, and you've got it's a fifty micron uh, artificial star, and it's got the off setting and it's all the way up to the nine setting. So there's nine different settings of brightness. Um, I was very surprised when I uh, found out it actually comes with its own battery. As we take off the back lid. It slides out. Okay, it's a cheap battery, but it's better than nothing. It's better than fucking out for another battery, and I'm guessing this will last quite some time. It's certainly a, a it's a one-off device that will work. Okay, it's very light, and um, as you can see, uh, you see an LED. That's basically to rectify what the star is going to look like. There is a second hole at the back, but I'm not too sure what that's used for. But it's very small, very compact, and it's what you need. And um, we're going to go through all the brightness. So, as you can see, it's, you click it, and it activates the star. And that imitates the star. That's at number one brightness, believe it or not. And we go, we go above, and... We go through uh, the highest brightness, as you can see, it goes like almost like a, a Vega type star to imitate a Vega star. But obviously, you can adjust the brightness to suit different, um, um, obviously, the different dark background from a distance. Uh, so, obviously, you adjust this to suit your surrounding areas so, so you can dim the star or you can. Uh, Increase the brightness and all that to make it stand out. If it's uh... but the good thing is, uh, this device can be used during the day, so there's no requirement to try and do collimation on a star. And what this device will do will imitate a, a so-called star. And you place this, um, you place this artificial star at a distance, probably around about 60 to 80 feet away from your telescope and then what you do is you adjust the brightness to suit your surrounding areas alright and then what you do is you aim the telescope towards this uh, device and you center it into your eyepiece now I'm not going to go into too much depth how to, um, to, how to uh, uh, collimate a telescope that will come on a later guide so as you can see first impressions um, very very good uh, high quality uh, product uh, and and I do like the star now at the moment the the camera is not doing any justice but the actual star itself is very pinpoint it's so pinpoint it, it definitely looks like a star but on the camera it just appears to be um, slightly brighter than usual and that's on the lowest setting but actually it's, it's very dim and it looks like a star. So, conclusion to the Geoptic artificial star. Um, I'm actually really quite happy with the results it's been given me. Working extremely well. Um, I managed to test it out and able to achieve uh, what I wanted, an out of focus star. Um, this this um, fiber optic LED is really quite bright, so you have to actually dim the brightness down quite a bit, even during the day. I usually set mine to about number five setting. 
Also, upon uh, reading the uh, the manual for ROM, I actually found out what that hole is, and I actually noticed that it's actually a quarter uh, thread. So basically, what this will enable you to do, this hole will enable you to attach a, a dovetail screw or attach it to a camera tripod. So really nice, quite a nice feature there. Is yes, you can actually attach it to your existing camera tripod and then use it. Um, really quite impressed with that. Um, again, the quality and build is is very good. Um, I must agree that I paid around about 109 euros, which works out around about 80 pounds, which seems crazy to to buy something as so simple as that but I assure you that it is worth the money not only because uh, it will save you a lot of time and effort it also this product can be used for a variety of equipment that which is includes Shimmick Cassegrains, Maxitov Cassegrains, Reflectors and even refractors but I think it's more for those three type of telescopes mainly. Uh, the refractors I think is the one that's got the, the, the multi switches for the red, blue and green banding and that's more or less for refractors but we're talking refractors of very high quality and we're talking high professional ED uh, doublets or ED triplets uh, apochromatic refractors of that of of that sort of nature and some of them can be collimated um, a lot of people are not not, not very aware of ref high end refractors that need re uh, collimation but they do but I'm not going to go into that into that depth anyway but again the price you pay for 100 okay 109 euros for 80 pounds it sounds crazy money for, for something of this sort of nature but you're not just uh, paying for something that is cheap quality it also has a very uh, high intensified 50 uh, micron um, fiber optic um, I assure you now this is not just any normal LED uh, from you can buy from an electronic shop like Mappings or something. You cannot make a simple thing. This is accurate, highly tested. Uh, so I think it's calibrated this uh, device. So it's not a sort of thing you can just shine a torch and then do it that way. It doesn't work like that. This does work and it will give you that image out of focus star. And when you do focus on the telescope, it will appear exactly like a star you're just looking at. So, do not try and cut corners and all that. This is not some kind of device or, you know, that you could make yourself. Um, again, I can't stress that enough. However, there is one thing I would recommend is that despite the variable uh, brightness, it is worth the money, that little bit extra money to get the variables brightness. There is the, 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 small, uh, the, the smaller variant which is just an on and off switch where there's no brightness you can adjust. You can't adjust the brightness it's just you just switch it on and there you go. And um, to only say the variable brightness does help big time as you can adjust it to suit uh, for different portable lenses of your telescopes and whatever. Uh, this you can adjust suit uh, the brightness you need and therefore brilliant the on and off one it's 69 euros it works out around about 55 pounds but okay it is worth that little bit extra for the the geo-optic um, variable brightness one again there's the other there's the other variant with the ed refractors if you're owners of ED refractors, there are uh, there is the other one, which can again even more expensive. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is, it's I know it's expensive and it's it is at first uh, disheartens a lot of you, 
thinking, okay, that's a bit out of my pocket. But believe me, this device can be used for any telescope, virtually any telescope, except for refractors. But this this model in particular will work for most types of telescopes, particularly if there is a secondary mirror involved. Because what that does is, as you put this, when you focus on your telescope, and you put it out of focus, what you're looking at is an out of focus mirror, an out of focus star, and you'll see a central obstruction, and it looks like a donut. Now that that dark bit in the middle is basically the secondary mirror, and uh, that's what you're trying to look at. Now I'm not going to cover this at the moment, I'll cover this on a later day on a further on the go. Well, I just need to point out that yes, I'm aware it is expensive, but once you've got this item, it's all you need, seriously. And you can collimate your telescope very easy with this product. Very, very impressive, and it is worth the money. I was quite impressed, it did come with its own battery. The, the instruction manuals that you get with it, it's only one page, and it's literally how to turn it on, switch it on and basically you have a table and in the table will show you the set distance you need for all that, uh, for this device to work properly. Now for most of us usually um, probably in, you know, for example an 8 inch reflector, the distance you require is 17 meters but that just depends on the telescope you and the aperture you own. Uh, and there is an equation on there to work out the exact um, distance you need. That distance is crucial because what that uh, distance is, is to not only bring it into focus with the, uh, the telescope at a such a certain short distance, but what you're also doing is you're going at a, um, you're testing below the door's limit. Now, it's a certain uh, measurement of the resolution of your um, telescope basically and basically you're testing below the door's limit so that's the reason why you have to have a, a certain set distance you're going past beyond that point so that you can test the telescope and basically through that door's limit is that when you try to adjust uh, the optical mirrors or the lenses on there what you're testing is trying to get it as central as you can on these little rings and all that and that's what you're doing and also you have to adjust it through different screws and all that on your obviously on your flat or on your, on your secondary or your primary main mirror again if you make cask range you adjust it on the secondary uh, mirror most of the time uh, but obviously if um, again, mixed reviews. I'll probably get mixed reviews from your guys, but again, it's once you've got this item, there is no more. There's n believe me, you will save dividends, and you can save a lot of time and hassle, and get your telescopes fine-tuned to exactly how the telescope wants to be performing at. Again. Um, Please feel free to share any comments regarding this product and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video guys. So thanks again, thanks for watching and please guys.